the obvious. I mean, on the practice pitch, this team is real competitive. They get off, and it's a camaraderie that happens. How important is that balance, Brian, when you got so many games back to back? Important. Well, I think the compare the competitive spirit, which you just mentioned in your maybe a different word or two is what drives this club and this franchise to be successful. Because even though they're in a good, look, they're in a good spirits, Maz, they're in good spirits. But the games are always competitive. They don't like losing, which is something that I appreciate. So having that within a group of senior players, experienced players, and it trickles down to all the young players, I think that's important, you know? But the team, look, the team's in a good way. I mean, we've had a bunch of adversity this year. We're continuing to just, you know, do what we can to win games and put ourselves as high up in the table as we can, starting with Saturday. And then, you know, then we're going to go play on Wednesday and hopefully go deep in the playoffs and, you know, hopefully make some noise. Saturday starts with a team that's coming off a big win and, uh, you know, they're back home after being on the road. Well, they must be feeling good scoring four away from home. It was an exciting game. Uh, and another good result before that. So, you know, he switched to a back line of five in both those games. So interesting. He was interesting kind of just getting the changes because, you know, we have our spy. You know, we got our, we, we got our ace in a the hole there. But then, you know, he's changed a few things up. Pablo, so we'll see what they bring. Uh, Brad talked a little bit about not looking ahead to a final. It's, it's a little difficult to do, obviously, with that kind of on the horizon, but uh, what have you told the team about about that and you know, focusing on the task at hand? Look, it is, Mickey, it's in their subconscious, and I can, I can use whatever tricks I, I, you know, to get them to believe that this game is the most important. They have to believe it for themselves. They're the ones that have to actually just do the work and make sure that they prepare for a tough team away from home, a place that we haven't had many good results over the years. I mean, we've had a few, but you know, it's a tough place to play. So my messaging has been, you know, they have one, sh one day short of rest. Can we get on top of them early? Can we go? Uh, you know, in our in our review of the Santos Lagunas film at the very end, I put up in big red letters RSL, you know, just to make sure that they, you know. So we're trying to do whatever we can to, you know, bring some of that messaging into their conscience. And they're going to hear a lot the rest of today and tomorrow that this is the most important game. RSL played really tough uh, in June. We're all had that late PK. What do you expect uh, in the match tomorrow? Well, we're not 100% sure because of the, just the little changes in lineup. You know, how is he going to come off two days rest? He's got to rotate some guys or, or maybe not. So we'll see when we get the lineup card. Uh, our focus is just on us, what we can do. Uh, I think the team understands how we want to play. So it's just a matter of getting them to play to our standard without the distractions. Coach, I'm interested on, uh, you mentioned uh, when uh, Leo Chu came in, you know, there was a little bit of nervousness, uh, there was a little bit of imprecision. Uh, do you bring that up? Do you kind of work with him with the tape, uh, or is it just not enough minutes to really break it down individually? You know? We talked to him. We didn't show him any film. We obviously showed the last goal in our team review, but it's mainly just, you know, Freddie's going to work with him just on his defensive responsibilities from that position of the field. When the ball's on the far side of the field, he's not a winger, right? He's got to come and tuck in a little bit. So just getting him to understand the technical, you know, responsibilities that he has. But he's a smart kid. I mean, he's learning more English. This morning we had a couple sentences together. I mean, my broken Spanish and his broken English, so it's good. Any other questions? Uh, I wanted to ask a little bit about uh, Jimmy and, and Brad. You know, it's been great to have you know both of them, but yeah. you know, they probably both want to be starters. So how's that competition been? And you know, how do you take that? I mean, it seems to be a pretty good and healthy 
competition for them. It's great. I love it. You know, it's good on that side. You could say that, okay, Alex might be the incumbent, but Kellen has shown that he can play there. Kellen can play in the middle. Josh wants to play in the middle. You know, Freddie wants to play. Benizé has been great for us. I mean, there is a little bit of maybe, maybe it's not spoken about as much because I think the team is tight. You hear Christian all the time saying how this is a really tight group. But again, internally, they all want to play. And that just drives the level of training up, which helps our performances. With how good these players that you just mentioned have been, Kellen and, and Medranda and stuff, uh, is this one of the deepest teams you've had? That you could just bring somebody off the bench and you're just like sure that they're going to work out? And... Well, <laughs> I mean, it's still pro sports. You're not 100% sure, but yeah. I mean, we've got a good deep squad and you know, we're able to do lots of different things. I think on top of the depth of the squad, it's the kind of different personalities. Like, you know, just for example, if I play, you know, Freddie Montero or Nico Ladero in that kind of top of our house, it just changes the look of our team. You know, if I play JP and Atencio and JP and Kellen, it changes the complexity of our team. You know, Nuhu and Brad early in the season were lights out because Nuhu covered everything for Brad. Brad felt like he could go. And then I can put Shane and Jimmy. Maybe it's more solid defensively. I mean, we have a ton of ways to play. So that makes us pretty dangerous. Ron, is it fair to say you still don't, your philosophy from playing from the back doesn't change? No, we're going to play out from the back. There's different ways to do it. You know, Santos pushed four guys high, sometimes six guys high. But then you're leaving Christian, you know, Freddy, Raul, three for three out there. I mean, I might take those odds. <laughs> I mean, you know, one of our best sequences against Santos was, you know, we had a goal kick or it was a free kick or whatever, and they pressed high, and Christian got a flick header to Alex, and we got in behind him. And I mean, if teams want to do that, you know. We got that speed. Yeah, just wait till Jordan Morris comes back, and then let's see teams try and press high against us and leave Jordan and Raul and Christian up front. Let's see that. Uh, since you mentioned that uh, how's, how he's out here, obviously doing some work after uh, training, uh, Good. you know, kind of. I know but he, you know, I'm gonna, yeah, but, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pump the brakes a little bit on Jordan's recovery because it's been a big story that's been coming out. He's on a medical timeline. He's got to go through X amount of training sessions, all of that sort of stuff. I'll keep you guys updated as it gets closer to his actual, you know, play date. And then there's also. Look, if he proceeds better than planned, maybe a couple days early, maybe a week or who knows. But he's getting closer. You know, he's getting closer. We're gonna take we're gonna take everybody, uh, the whole squad to uh, Vegas. Not to say that he's gonna play, but just to get him back in with the group on a on a on an away trip. So we're making strides to include him back in the team. Jordy's out there. Jordy Delos, Jordy Delem, you saw his Instagram post yesterday. He's he's such a nice young man. I mean, he just loves being part of this team, and you know, coaches love guys like him. And he's generally really happy. He's in good spirits all the time, and that's good inside our locker room. Uh, you held uh, Nico out of uh, the uh, last game. How's he uh, doing? Is it just kind of precautionary? Or is it's he... precautionary. We got to make sure that he's for the long haul correct. Not to get into Leagues Cup, but you know, some people see it as a, like an, an obstacle to play with the league. You guys have taken it more as maybe it's preparing you even for you know the playoffs. I mean, you're going out there, best lineups. How can these games against this tough Liga MX can prepare you or help you in the playoffs at the end? Look, look people, yeah, there's a controversy there about <clears throat> how much effort you put in, you know, Philly. You know, they didn't have a good result. Where are they in the standings? They were one of the, you know, strong candidates on the east side to repeat as Supporter Shield. I mean, each team is different, Nico. I just believe, 
we believe our philosophy as a club is that we want to go out in every competition and every game and it means something. And other guys might try and, you know, tactically change and move and by necessity. I mean, uh, there's always injuries. And that's and, and that's fine. That's 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 sometimes what you have to do. But we want to <laughs> we're taking this com this competition very seriously. It is good experience for us in case we get back to Champions League. You know, gives us a little bit of confidence going against League MX teams. But of course, we're playing in the US. You know, it's another story to go down there and, you know, as Teca and get a result or, you know, going to different places down there. It's, it's more challenging.